Happy Friday, everyone. Today is October 16th, ending the week with a small green day plus $214.25. So I had a, uh, was in a little bit of a hole this morning, was able to dig myself out, get to a positive on the day. Uh, so I'm going to go over that. I've got some really good takeaways on the trading today, and then we'll also recap the performance for the week. So let's start at the top here, starting with 6B, the British pound. Took a little long runner, booked small profit, 81.25. In the Russell and NASDAQ, booked a $280 profit on that pairs trade. Also took a pairs trade in gold and silver, which ended up being a loser a uh, net loser of 162. It was actually up a couple hundred dollars, but uh, it reversed pretty quickly. Ended up closing out for a loser. Uh, took a long runner in the Dow. Ended up closing that for a small loser of $62. Alibaba had a couple of losing trades uh, to start with, and then took got a, uh, was able to catch a late morning runner in Baba that got me almost back to even, uh, but down 148 total on the day. And then DKNG, which is DraftKings, but we uh, affectionately called Donkey Kong, uh, took a small loss of 104 on that. Facebook, minus 595. Intel, caught a runner for 150. Uh, Pinterest tried to catch a runner uh, a couple times and, and got smoked out of that for minus 627. Roku, minus 224. Tesla, small winner. A win was my biggest loser at $825, and then Zoom, my monster win, which I'll talk about, over $2,300 on that one. So plus $214.25 on the day. Let's jump into the charts and, and talk about this. So let's start with um, let's start with the beginning of the day. Uh, the beginning of the morning was pretty rough. We started with a, a Mighty 90 trade in win, had this big flush down. Uh, tried to get long right here and then added a little bit more here. Uh, it started to bounce and then I was just, I kind of had my my line in the sand right here that if it broke below the lows of the day at that point, I was just going to get out. That's And that's what happened. So I just bailed, ended up taking a uh, significant loss because I, I went in with some decent size and added to it as well. Ended up taking a loss, um, which, you know, I... I I don't look at that as doing anything wrong because you've got to cut your losses. Uh, now, look what happened. Obviously, right after that, it bounced nicely and would have booked a profit. So took a loss on win overall. It was my biggest loss of the day, so it didn't start out too good. And then Roku was another loser, uh, 224. So um, had this big flush down and um, tried to get long. Let's see, what time was that in Roku? Took that at, um, let me just pull this up here so I get it right, um, yeah, 8.58. So, yeah, right here as it was coming down to the close of yesterday, and it flushed down, so we added a little bit. Ended up getting out of some here, but then it just rolled over, so ended up taking a small loss on Roku. And then uh, Diamond King was a, a loser of 104, excuse me, Draft King, used to be called Diamond King, Um in DraftKings, same kind of thing. Got in, got in here, started to bounce, uh, and then and then it just rolled over. So we ended up just getting out there. So small loss there. So at that point, oh, and then and then um, on the runner side, Pinterest. So let me get to pins. Uh, pins, pins, pins. There it is. So uh, so Pinterest opened up. Uh, gapped up higher, really strong on the day, started to, you know, push through this pivot line. Uh, I caught, you know, a nice piece of this and then uh, came back down. I, I tried to get back into some here at this pivot and get some more at this pivot and then just got flushed out. And so ended up taking a, a decent sized loss on Pinterest. Uh, again, kind of a great setup, great situation with the stock and the news and everything. But unfortunately, uh, sometimes the bad guys win. And so, so that one got me. So that's how I started my day. So I was literally down, you know, I had some winners in the pairs trades and some other things going on, but I was down over a thousand dollars at this point. And, and then we we're, you know, getting close to the, uh, the end of the morning. And so we, we, uh, stopped the live stream and I literally, and, and oh, the last one we took before we got out was Tesla. Um, had this big flush down in Tesla and just caught a little piece of this. But then as soon as, basically right after we got off the live stream, I was just, I just got out, booked a small winner of 60 bucks. But I just, 
I could tell that my focus wasn't there. I could tell that mentally, you know, from taking the losses and I just didn't feel in sync with the market this morning. And so, and this is a really important thing because this, I've done this so many different times and it, it's always been beneficial. What I did is I just, I closed out all my positions, closed out my gold, silver pairs trade. I, I didn't have any positions on at that point. I walked away from the screen. I went outside, I took a walk, cleared my mind. I came back and and then that's when I took um, positions in Zoom, which was my biggest winner. That's when I took positions in, uh, I did take a, a loser in Facebook, but I took a, a, got a winner in, uh, that's when I made my late morning run in BABA to get almost back to even there. I took a, I took a, a winner in Intel. So like Intel, for example, uh, pushed all the way down, still very strong on the day. Uh, so when it started to kind of bounce and, and firm up and consolidate, got in here and, and took a nice little runner there. And then uh, in Zoom, Zoom's my biggest winner. So when I when I got back in front of the screens, it was, you know, the market was coming down, the market was weak. Uh, Zoom came all the way back down to this pivot level and I got in right there. And I rode this thing all the way up to about right here, not to the tippy top, but darn near. And it was just a, just a fantastic trade. I was, I was thinking clearly, uh, you know, zoom was very strong on the day near all time highs. Uh, the market started to firm up and get stronger again. And so just, it just, it was just a crystal clear trade. And so, um, and I held, I held most of my contracts all the way up. I, I, did get out of one right here and it came back down. I, I, I reloaded on that one, rode that up, got out of, got out of one and then rode the rest all the way up to here. So just a, a fantastic trade over, um, uh, what I say? Oh, it was over $2,000. It was, uh, yeah, $2,390 just on that zoom trade. So good stuff. I mean, the takeaway here for me is, you know, sometimes like for example, in the win trade, I mean, that easily could have been a winning trade. Instead of a, it was a an eight hundred and uh, eight hundred twenty five dollar loser. Uh, Roku um, was one that we were up a decent amount, and I was really close to getting filled on part of my position right here, and it it didn't quite get there, and then it just rolled over. You know, so that was very close to being either a scratch or a small winner or small loser. Um, same thing in, in Diamond in uh, DraftKings. I uh, on this bounce here, I just was really close to getting out of some. Never did, and no, I'm sorry. Actually, on that one, I did, and so I did take a small loss there. But my my point is, you know, especially, and I'll show you the Mighty Ninety performance, for, you know, to date and and for the week. And the one thing to remember is is the the management of these trades. There's so many little nuances with these trades that. Um, you, you don't want to look at just the strategy. You, you really got to focus on your mental state, on your mindset, on how you're managing the trades and, 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 and where your focus is. Uh, you know, for example, I, you know, at the point where I was down a thousand dollars this morning, you know, some of our members were up 500, went five for five on their trade. So, uh, you know, sometimes you're going to see things a little bit differently. Sometimes you're going to manage things a little bit differently. Sometimes you're, you're going to pass on trades. Sometimes you're going to take different trades. And so it, it, it really is a focus game. And we've been on such a hot streak with these mighty nineties, I think is six days in a row, uh, that we were green, on uh, on the mighty 90 strategy. And so, uh, anyway, that all that being said is just to kind of re reiterate something that we really focused on in the mighty 90 class. And that is mindset. Uh, and, and sometimes when you're not in sync with the market or you're, you know, you have a few losers, you've got to get away. You've got to refocus. You got to get some fresh air. You got to, uh, and, and, and it's such a big deal. So I don't, I want to, I want to kind of beat that dead horse into you guys to make sure you understand that that is a critical part of the day trading. All right, with that, let's jump into the performance for the week. Bring over my trusty spreadsheet here. Uh, so this is Mighty 90, so plus 552 for the week. Obviously, today it was red. Uh, could have been much better had had uh, today not happened, but P&L is your only truth. I'll say that over and over and over. Uh, so anyway, plus 552 for the week. Ended our green streak going back to... Yeah, we had Thursday, so we had one, two, 
three, four, five, six green days in a row, and then ended that today. And then uh, on the pairs trade, plus 259.50, took a total of five trades, uh, three winners, two losers. Uh, yesterday uh, kind of brought that brought that down, but three out of four days were winning in the pairs trades. And then the runners just continue to crush, um, plus, plus 3,082.50 for the day. On Monday, had a small losing day of twenty five bucks, uh, but otherwise, you know, plus nine eighty seven, plus six ninety one, plus one seventy nine, and then today, plus you know, over twelve hundred bucks. Uh, mostly, you know, well, thanks to Zoom uh, being the saving grace there. But um, so uh, good week overall. If we look at our summary here, so here's going back to eight thirty one when we started breaking it out this way and started tracking it on this sheet. Uh, you'll see that the PL for the Mighty 90 minus 149 during this time period. And going back to what I said about mindset and, you know, taking and managing trade certain ways, you know, I know that a lot of our members have done much better than this. You know, they're in the green. And so a lot of it is, you know, your focus and how you're seeing and how you're managing the trades. I guess my point is don't don't look at this. Don't look at my performance and think that's how this strategy performs. Uh, because my, my performance is 100% irrelevant to how you'll do with these strategies. 100%. Now I understand that people like to see other people's performance. It makes them feel good. It makes them feel confident in a strategy or whatever. But the bottom line is, um, you know, my, my performance has zero relevance to what your performance will be. You're going to get different fills. Uh, you're going to see things a little bit different. You're going to pass on certain trades. You're going to take other trades that I don't. And so just, just understand that over time, I mean, this winning percentage is going to be much higher. It's going to be closer to 70%. The P and L is going to be green. And so I don't, I don't have any issue with, with the mighty 90 strategy. I know I've, I've gotten emails from some members saying, you know, is the mighty nine, should we not even do that anymore? It's not, you know, it's not performing very well. And, and the answer to that is absolutely not. The other thing to think about is the engagement that you get and your folk, the focus that you get from taking the mighty 90 trades, a lot of times leads to some of these runner strategy trades. And when I say that, I mean, you know, I might take a, I might take a loser in the mighty 90 and then it starts to set up as a runner. And I may not have seen that as a runner, uh, without, taking the loss in the mighty 90. So it, it all, it all works together. So I I'm very high on the mighty 90 strategy, even though during this period of time, and keep in mind, we're talking about 89 trades. I mean, that's really not a large sample size. So my point is don't, uh, don't sleep on the mighty 90. It's not dead. Um, it's just, it's just taking a nap right now or, or it did for a few weeks. Uh, okay, so pairs trades uh, so far plus 662 on 22 trades, 63% win rate. Uh, pairs trades um, continue to do pretty well. Um, runners, obviously, like I say, crushing it over $20,000 at this point on 290 trades. Uh, and keep in mind, you know, this wins, this winning percentage doesn't mean anything, right? We're cutting, we're, we're going to have a decent amount of losers because we're cutting lot losers really quick. So, so the winning percentage isn't that big of a deal. The P and L is the factor here. Uh, so you can see obviously over $3,000 for the week, a uh, very nice week in the runner strategy, totaling up all together over $20,760, 401 trades, winning percentage 56.8. P and L per trade fifty one seventy seven, uh, and the breakdown from week to week. So, all in all, good stuff. Um, loving loving doing the day trading, especially especially in the live room where uh, I can interact with you all. It's been a lot of fun. Hope you guys are enjoying it too. Uh, this this day trading is a definitely a mental game, and I I love mastering the mental game of it. Uh, and continuing to to help you know give you my thoughts on how we can make you better as well. So. Hope you're enjoying that. Uh, that's it for this week. Um, next week in the day trade room, uh, we will not be live streaming Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Uh, I'll be traveling and just not in a good setup to be live streaming. So we are off Monday through Thursday next week, back on Friday. And then the following week, we make sure in the live stream room, you're checking the calendar because we'll be doing some a little bit later morning sessions where we'll, we'll jump in an hour after the market opens, give me time to do my core 
uh, portfolio alerts and that kind of stuff. We'll jump on an hour uh, later and and then go an hour later so you can watch help you know you can watch me manage some of these um, later morning runners that I think a lot of you all want to kind of see see what I'm doing and, and my thought process behind those. So look forward to that. Make sure you check the calendar in the live stream room and we will catch you in the live stream on Thursday. If you guys have any questions, let me know.